Hello everybody and welcome back to Piscari Fly Live. It's Peter Driver here, all the way from Thomastown, County Kilkenny. I hope everybody's keeping well. Uh, how you doing Kevin? Good to see you all back on here. Roger, good to have you back on with us there Raj. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, Bernard's on there, John Johnson, Brendan Splan, Martin Kenny, Br James Johnston, Jim Orlande, how you doing Jim, all the way from BC, uh, myself and Jim got to shake hands and say hello, how you doing Paul Burke, Dick Lanoon and James Kavanagh, great to see so many people back on there, I had a lovely trip over to British Columbia there recently and got to meet Jim Orlande, it, it was a pleasure to meet you Jim, I hope you're keeping well, Paul is on there as well, how you doing Paul, we're live and hey to everybody on YouTube, we're also live on YouTube, this is our first year streaming to YouTube, how you doing Nigel Haynes from Wales, David Donovan there, Richard O'Connor, great to see so many people back on, we got a great night lined up for you and I'm delighted to be back absolutely delighted a little bit of a sweat going on because as you've seen last night bit of extra te technology Anthony Bolton from County Wicklow how you doing and Dalty O'Donnell from County Donegal Mike McGovern from New York Jared Murta great to be back too Jared um, but a little bit of extra technology this year not worried about the fly tying or the chat it's all the bloody technology you have to watch I've got four or five screens going in front of me got the cameras and things like that so it's a little bit iffy so if there's a blank screen at some stage don't be shocked Wait a second, I'll get you back up and running, I think. I'll hit a few buttons and push or kick a few things. How you doing, Adrian? Good to be back on there. John Maru, how you doing, John? Uh, Dylan Roberts, how you doing, Dylan? From the Welsh D. Um, <laughs> good man, Dylan. Uh, I won't mention that. But uh, <coughs> absolutely, yeah, same. <coughs> Great to see you today as well, John. Uh, we were down in Adair Springs for the launch of the 2024 um, Irish Spring Angling Fair today with Nen Mars, so it was brilliant. Uh, <coughs> brilliant to be down there with John and a few of the lads. But... Um, <coughs> Hi to everyone, say hi to everyone on YouTube. If anyone's got any comments or anything like that, do shoot them across, it's live. Uh, hey Joe Quinn, uh, follow the fin. Keith Emerson there, how you doing Keith from County Wicklow as well. Um, great to see so many people back on in. So, great to be back folks. We've got a whole season lined up for you again. Lots of stuff I learned throughout the year. Uh, lots of new fly patterns that worked well. Different uh, tackle and stuff we came across throughout the year and we're going to be sharing that all which is anyone that's not been on with us before. It's a Saturday night. Every Saturday night. A um, couple of weeks time I won't be able to do a Saturday night because I'm best man at Mark Driver's wedding. We had a stag last weekend. Just about getting over it at this stage. But uh, that'll be one Saturday night I won't be able to do is that Saturday night. How are you doing Jamie Conway? Uh, good to have you on with us there. Um, so we have a great season. I'm just through a few notes here we had a great we have a great season lined up for you all uh with lots of different stuff going on youtube and uh, um or say on, on the live show dave is back of course dave is back on another contract for this year we's uh how you doing graham graham ridge and on there from from um <laughs> he's on there from Sweden uh, so you're doing great stuff over there in Sweden at the moment Graham. well done uh, but Dave is back on with his trivia quiz this year folks so Dave will be along in a little while with, with a question for you uh, do keep an eye out for that in the comment section say if you have any comments or anything like that or any requests please do shoot them across if I don't get some on the stream today I'll, I'll look back over it tomorrow and I tend to try and get back to as many people as possible there'll be a lot of questions from us sometimes and of course as you've seen in the intro there Pascari Club is coming this year a couple of weeks time we're doing a bit of testing at the moment that's a whole nother big thing I'll talk through it later on in the show and things like that give you a bit of an idea but there's going to be a lot more live shows coming on through Pascari Club um, it is a community based subscription um, it's going to be all year round. We're going to be doing it all year round. Live fly fishing, live fly time, all year round from all over the world. There's going to be chat groups, question and answer sessions, lots of different interviews with, with top class anglers. Um, discounts on products, live fly fishing from the rivers, on lakes and all that kind of stuff all year round. Live and unplugged, uncut. So I'll see lots of blanking and stuff like that going on. Maybe in that swear, swear or two here. How are you doing, John? John Wilkinson's on there from Canada as well and Damien. Dominic is on there as well. How you doing? We'll have master classes in the house. So the whole thing going on about Skyfly Club. Do watch out for it. And uh, really looking forward to that getting up and running. It's going to be fantastic. Basically, I've taken everything I've learned from doing this show for the last three or four years and I'm going to enhance it an awful lot more. In order to do that, I'm not going to be this Andrew description will be nine euros a month, first month free, and then it'll be nine euros a month after that. Um and it'll be really it'll be a big project it's going to be a huge project it's going to take a lot of my time pretty much all my time um, <clears throat> and really looking forward to getting stuck into that and being able to deliver something really unique to our followers and create a whole community based around fly fishing and learning and all that kind of stuff we'll be able to share a lot of content and things like that so looking forward to getting stuck into that so I hope you watch out for that how you doing Ken? Jenny Casey great to be back Jenny Tomas Sullivan how you doing Tomas? great to see so many people back on so what i got lined up for you tonight folks I got two cracking nymphs that we worked out, we fished all through the season. I got a lovely little dry fly, and then we're going to finish off the evening with an absolute cracker of a wet fly for the locks. Okay, really a belter. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
stick with us for, for a little while here. I say, there might be a glitch or two along the way, but we'll deal with it as we go. That's the joys of live uh, tying. So in the hook, this in the vise here, I've got a size 16 Dohaku jig hook and I got a 3.5mm counter slotted bead uh, stuck up onto that. This nymph is, I can't take credit for this nymph, in fairness, Mark Drivers, uh, it's Mark Drivers nymph, um, and he used it kind of pre-Thomas Town of practice, it was an absolute belt for him in Thomas Town, think himself and Roger, Roger if you're watching, uh, sorry Mark, Mark gave away your secrets, but um, they had 69 fish in one session on this fly, probably dropped another 60 odd fish on it, and from then on for the rest of the season, it was one of our go-to nymphs for those seasons, so talk to Mark, I said, Mark, I'm showing the fly, and he said, go on, work away, so nothing really rocket sense about it, but it, it shows, and you'll see with the four flies I'm tying tonight, the real trend that went down with flies this year for me, um, for me tying for my customers, as well as what I'm using myself, and you'll get the trend as we go through i'm not going to talk too much about it now we'll talk a little bit about maybe more in the next fly because the next nymph is my my number one nymph and and i'll talk a bit more about that but we're going to start off with a little bit of tommy fly good old tommy fly we're still on the tommy fly number 14 folks number 14s don't forget do not cut off that tag end just yet that's just kind of winding on the wrong way for me there a little bit of tommy fly and a little bit of cock leon small little pinch of cock leon for the tail This really was a belter of a nymph. And we're just going to form a little hot orange butt. Down to the bottom of that fly. Now before we tie off that orange, we're going to take our tag end and pull it up over the end that you normally cut off earlier and pull it up over the, the butt. And that just helps keeps it secure. Um, good practice to have is when you're doing butts on flies is to pull the tag end up over and it just stops those first couple of fish will rip that off and pull it down the hook on you and uh, pulling it down the bend of the hook and destroy your fly straight away so uh, we can just whip finish that off now if you want to put a little bit of varnish on it it's up to yourself i prefer not to um because of um i feel sometimes it can make the, the cut the, it takes away a little bit from the intensity color a little bit of black simple fly classic wax trade going on the hook there now this time we take away our waist. And we got some fine Sabaya copper wire here. This is 0 0.1. And we're going to add this in for a rib. So we're tying a little Frenchy. Okay, but the whole thing about, say, tonight is, is the kind of the theme of the, of the flies. And it was just kind of in the last half an hour, I was sitting there pulling some stuff together and things like that. And I thought, geez, the more I was pulling stuff together, I thought there's, there's a real common theme going on in these flies from last year. And a lot has to do with the weather and fish behavior. So we're just bringing our tread down to where we want our butt to finish and, and the body to start and then I'm just going to get a nice even taper on that, fl on that fly like so. I'm going to take the wire around and uh, absolutely Kieran Sherlock hope you're keeping well hope everybody had a great season it was a real mixed bag for me really mixed bag uh, summertime got very little fishing in due to some family stuff going on and things like that and the shop was busy thank god thanks everyone for their support throughout the year again um and then between the flooded waters and stuff like that it just oh it was just an up and down season all over the place but you know i haven't heard too many people say differently be it on the lakes or um how are you doing turning okay yeah um We'll actually have to do a couple of those for you, Tiernan. To do the gills down the side, I'll tie one for you, okay? In the coming weeks, I'll, I'll do a show with some nymphs with the gills, and um, I'll show you about that. It'll be better if I show it and try to explain it. I could be here a while if I actually try to explain it. Um, how are you doing, Thomas O'Sullivan? Uh, Jared Dunn there, Miles Riley, um, and Lucas is on there on, on YouTube. I've got so many screens this year, I don't know where to look. Um, but anyway... Great to be able to go live to YouTube and give our followers on YouTube a chance at winning a few of Dave's prizes. The way it's going to work for tonight's, for Dave's prizes, actually, folks. Sorry, what I've just added in there is UV Ice Dubbin by Hens. Okay, and that is number... I'll read it out. It's 14. Okay, UV Ice Dubbin by Hens, number 14. Um, yeah, turn and I will do that. But it's great to be able to give uh, so the, the YouTube uh, followers a little bit of a chance at Dave's quizzes. Um... So the way it's going to work for Dave's quiz, Dave's, Dave is going to ask the question. I already have the answer. And what we'll do then is um, tomorrow morning, I will actually go back over the streams and I will see who was the first to come in because it would be impossible for me or even Dave because we've got so many different streams going on at the one time. It'll be possible, impossible for me or Dave to really um, see, see who was the 
proper winner. So all I've done is just whip finished after adding a little bit of that uh, number 14 UV ice oven, and that was it. A simple little black Frenchie with a purpley kind of thorax on it. Maybe a little bit heavy on the thorax more than I like. Uh, too busy chatting. But um, very simple Frenchie. That was that was Mark's number one in for the entire season. And the back end of the season for me, it was absolutely serious. So you had the orange, the hot Tommy orange, not your typical glow bright four or five. And um, it was the kind of, uh, as you can see, the kind of violet purpley kind of dubbing that was there. That was that was an absolute belter for us. Back end of the season, after Thomas Down once Mark shared it with me. Um, but that, that was my number one point fly. Uh, moving on from there, I know you'll start to see a bit of a trend coming in and, and then we'll be moving on to a little dry fly along the way. Um, I'm going to put in, again, a jig size 16. We fished a lot of heavy beads this year because obviously we had a lot of heavy water. Thanks, Kiran. We had an awful lot of heavy water. So for me, most of the time when I actually managed to get to the river, it was 3.5s and 4 mils. Now, you did see a video earlier on in the year I put up, or in the middle of the season, I put up a, a, a fly fishing in dirty water. It was um, a variation, my variation, of the Grayling Slayer. That really fished really well for me. Now, I've tied it on the show once twice, so I'm not going to really go back over that pattern again, try, try and keep it fresh for you. But um, that was a really good fly, and I've done quite well on it. But this would have been my number one nymph any chance I got. 3.5 mil uh, slotted black nickel on a Dohaku size 16 G-Cook. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, <coughs> and what we're going to do then is put on a bit of classic wax black tie and thread. This was Mike Fly, okay? So I said we fished an awful lot in high water this year. Everyone was fishing in high water. Um, I'm looking for the, the body of this one, or the tail. I need to swap over my tubs here now for a minute. So, um, fished an awful lot of high water. And normally when I'm fishing high water, all my experience would say, you know, go black, okay? A lot of guys would say, ah, go bright colors, go orange. Trust me, in high dirty water, fish are gonna see a black silhouette and hell of a lot quicker than they're gonna see any other color. Okay, so black is always a good colour, but another very good colour is purple. Okay, and you see the trend going through, even the lock style fly I'll do later on, and the major I'm going to do in a while, the dry fly, and the two nymphs that me and Mark both fished, um, you know, you can see that common common trend of black and purples. Okay, so here what I've got in the, um, I'm going to tie in a tail, is Twisted Yarn, Twisted Bright Yarn by Tommy Fly. Okay, number 13, it's an absolute stunning colour. Um, as you can see, and has a lovely shimmer to it. Okay, it's a floss. I've uh, been using this now for the last while. Tie a lot of spiders with this stuff, actually. My uh, partridge and partridge and orange. I tie me um, purple and jungle cock spiders with it. Absolutely lovely, lovely stuff. Tie with. It gives a beautiful, smooth, glossy body. But this time, I'm going to tie it in as a tail. Okay. So I'm going to tie it in. I'm going to put in three strands for this tail. So I take a one piece and I treble it over. And we're going to just twist the hand and just get that under. Tie it into the tail. Clean up our waist. And then trim our tail. Just give it a little bit of a brush out to get it nice and balanced there. <coughs> now for a rib. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a bit of dark purple wire. There is no markings on this spool. It's very old. I don't know where it came from. It is probably not as fine as the Sabaya 10. It'd be more like a Hens Point 1.4. <coughs> but it's quite a dark purple as you can see. Um, it's a lovely colour going over a very dark body. Um, thanks Robbie. Good to have you on there Robbie. Hope you're keeping well. The new house is suiting you well. So I'm going to tie that in there. Making sure the wire is the full length of the body so I don't have any little humps or bumps along the way. And then I'm going to take my body material. Now the body material is a hen's flat miler. Okay? And it's gun barrel. As you can see. Okay? It's a gun barrel colour. Like black nickel. Okay? It's, it's, I've a couple of old spools here of it. Haven't been able to find in a long time. <coughs> I do like to give you the proper tie-ins of these. Um, if I do come across it somewhere, I will pick it up in the shop. But I haven't came across it in a long time. It's back from the days of when we had Irish fly time. I have a couple of bits of spools of it left, but it's black gum barrel, is what I kind of call it. <coughs> yeah, John, that's it. And you know what, John? I'm half thinking about trying to take a race up there. Hey, Anthony Brady, good to have you back with us. Um, half thinking about taking a race up maybe next week. The North still has a little bit of fishing left up there. Um, so we're just going to tie in that little bit of black gum barrel. Flat tinsel. Now, the only thing is fine. Okay, actually, I'm making a mistake there. Now, I'm going to just... Wind that there for a minute, folks. 
and I'm going to attach it up near the bead. Because it's so fine, you're going to have to give the body at least two runs. Okay, so if you attach it near the bead rather than the butt, and what I do is then is I run down the fly with it. It gives a lovely shine to, to a, a dark bodied fly. Really interesting stuff. I'll run down the body with it. Mind that point of that hook because if you nick it, you're starting again. So just take your time, no rush. <coughs> Excuse me. And then once I get to the bottom, I'll wind it back up. Just making sure I have good coverage over the thread. Once I get back up to the head then, secure it off, trim my wire waist, and there you can see we have our nice gun barrel. See that? A little bit of a shimmer off that now. <coughs> Good stuff, John. I'll see if I can squeeze it, I'll head up. But I used to get one, because I really didn't get much time on the river here. I'm going to take my dark purple wire now and rib up that. Body there. Secures it in. Lovely finish to it. Nice slim body there with a little bit of a shine to it as you can see. But not over, not overdoing it. Tie off your black thread. We only use the black thread to create the body. We need to switch threads to finish the fly. Tidy up that tail a little bit. There we go, lovely. Okay, we move on to the Kevlar. And we're gonna attach our Kevlar. In there up the head. A couple of turns, a bit of pressure on it there to get it to really lock in. The edge of the blade of the scissors and just nick that in nice and tight. Okay, don't worry about that a little bit. I've got a new camera as you've all seen and as you can see the, it's showing every little tag. We just go okay, that's fine. That little tag, little white tag is in there. Now you're going to notice that now in a couple of seconds. Okay, we're going to put a little CDC and Dubbin collar on this one. Now there's several ways to put in CDC and Dubbin. Okay, uh, or let's say talk about CDC first. Okay, you get a nice CDC feather like that. You expose the tip and you can wind it on. It, it does create a bit of bulkiness where it meets the body, okay? And I find it, it, it's, it, doesn't, it takes away from kind of a real slim profile of a nymph and it can restrict it a bit in kind of when it's trying to penetrate down to the deep waters. So the best way I like to do, especially for the nymphs, is what I do is I get now trusted bull clip. Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah, I hope, it, I hope it's better quality. Now, this year, last year used to take me so long to set up um, now, saying that, it took me all day yesterday to set this camera up. I'm no way techie, but um, <clears throat> it, it, it seems to be a better quality. Uh, but last year, the, the Logitech, which I'm now using for the, the facial shot, um, was, yeah, it took me ages to try and zoom in, zoom out, and get the colours right and exposures right and stuff like that, where this camera seems to be a little bit more natural and I'm able to, to set it up that bit quicker. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out a little bit of Spectre Dubbin. I'll show you this here now. And how is the YouTube looking, John? How's everyone on the YouTube? David Lee is on there. You could, Dave, absolutely, Dave. Uh, good, great point, Dave Lee. Uh, anti static bags for the body, absolutely. I'll tell you what I've even used at times is uh, black bags, black sacks. Um, or I've also used black. If you go into Super Value and you see some of the mandarin oranges, they come in a little black sack, like se very similar to onion bag. And I've used that as well. And it is quite good, okay? Um, what, uh, some, there is some Perdigon body and stuff you can get on spools. It, it's not bad, but. Um, I do like to use the flat stuff off, off a spool and just wind it on like I just did. So what I'm doing here is I'm just teasing out a little bit of this dubbing. Small little bit, okay? We just we don't need much. Less is more here. Remember, we want to keep a nice slim profile on that. Um, so I have a little bit of that. And what I'll do is... Um, thanks, John. What I'll do is I'll just sit that on top of my CDC. Just like so. Okay, so you can see the CDC and the top of that. And then I'll take my bull clip. I use the fancy ones, the ones you get in Mr. Price. Okay, I like them because I like that steel blade. Okay, you can get the plastic ones and they're very good, the magic magic clamps and that kind of stuff. We have them there from hens and stuff in the shop and they're really good, but I've just been using this for so many years. I've got so used to it, like, um, thanks Joseph. Um, <laughs> good man, Robbie. Um, so I've been using this for years and I just like the steel blade. I like it, you know, just the way I work it and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clamp in a bit of that dubbing and the CDC 
into the clip like so. As you can see, all right? <coughs> Kieran, I actually maybe, I may tell you later on because I, I, I spent this, a part of this year, putting all my dubbins into um, the Oaks and I didn't code them at all. So I, um, so I, I, and I just go by look rather than code an awful lot. But I have it downstairs. I just don't know the code off the top of my head. But I'll get it and send me a message on Messenger later on. <clears throat> and if I don't get to you tonight, I'll get to you tomorrow. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what code it is. It's beautiful. It's, it's a real. So all I do here now is I'm going to snip across with my scissors. Leaving just a couple of mil. Sticking out of the, the clip as you can see. Couple of mil of that. CDC and... Uh, the CDC and the um, dubbin sticking out of the clip. And I'm just massaging out my Kevlar for splitting. That's the reason why I, I switched over from the, the classic wax to the Kevlar. Kevlar normally is much easier splitting. But the only thing is I'm nearly working in the dark here at the moment. Um, because the way the lights and all the screens are, they're all shining towards my face. And it means I can see a lot less than you guys and folks can see. Guys and girls, uh, split the thread, and then I'm going to make a little dubbing brush there. I'm just going to put that clip in, slide the two pieces of thread over onto the blade, and then just slowly slide them off until they catch the dubbing and stuff, and then I can release. Now, keep the tension very important here. Keep the tension with the left hand. Okay, you can see my left hand here is holding the bobbin. My right hand is now free. Keep that tension. If I don't keep that tension. That will all fall down okay so now what i'm doing now is i'm extending the tread bobbin down below in my right hand and i'm going to twist start spinning the bobbin but keep the tension as you can see nothing's moving there but the tread bobbin behind my hand is spinning away there okay but i'm keeping that tension on the left hand if i let that any slack come into that at all the whole thing will fall on the ground okay so i keep the tension spin it up and then when i've got a good bit of spinning done i'll release the left hand and i will allow it to spin as you'll see it now in a second okay Great stuff, Glenn. Thanks a million. <laughs> George McGrath's on there. George was down in uh, George was down in Adair Springs there today, folks. And uh, he went out to try. And, he went out to catch an old rainbow for himself. And uh, I gave him a little black dry fly, and uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. I was going to take the rod off him and show him how to use it properly, but I said, Ah, look at it, leave him at it anyway. But uh, I think he managed to get a couple of in. See, once I release that left hand, see what happens. Spins out lovely for me. Okay, so now the dubbin goes into the center and the CDC stays on the outside. Okay, so you got your lovely long CDC legs sticking on the outside and the dubbin gets sucked into the middle of our, of our, of our dubbin brush. Lovely way of doing dubbin brushes um, with the CDC and the dubbin. The, the CDC will always stay out nice and long and the dubbin gets sucked in, as you can see, into the center and it gives you a lovely sparkly core um, with a lovely long kind of elongated uh, CDC uh, legs coming out of it. Okay, so as I wind that in, I will stroke it. Stroke it out. I don't want to over bulk. Say the area where the where the body is meeting the um, where the body's meeting the bead. I want to keep it slim, so I don't just wind it in there. I give it a couple of strokes, and if any loose bits of dubbin come out, that's fine. We're not looking to overpower the fly with it. We're just looking to create a nice soft hackle on the fly with the core. And once I get so far, if I have too much, I just break away the CDC, break away the dubbin. There's no need for more. Less is more here, folks. Okay. Break away the CDC, break away the dubbin, and a couple of turns just to make sure everyone's well securing. Before I go to finish the flight, it is Robbie, yeah, doing a little light. I've started doing that. Now what I have is a little bit of a shake in that. So bear with me one second now folks and I will have it back up and running there now. Perfectly. That kind of happened to me now. Um, that kind of happened to me yesterday before when I was doing it and Um, 
kind of happened to me the day before and I have taken off the um, I have taken off the here we go I have taken off the um, oh the standby mode off the camera but for some reason and I couldn't figure out why for some reason It um Okay. I'll just do this right now for one second. For some reason it wouldn't um Okay. Little bit of a shimmer in there. Yeah, that's okay, it's perfect right now. So for some reason it wouldn't it's a standby mode after about half an hour to 40 minutes kicks in and uh, I couldn't I'll figure it out by next week I'll figure it out by next week uh, <coughs> but anyway so all I've done there is just another little pinch of dubbing and I'm going to put that between the hackle and the bead and it just helps taper all that kind of hackle back again I was just explaining to Robbie there less is more very very little bit of dubbing need in there not a lot little bit of a squeeze down with the Kevlar A little bit of a squeeze down there with Kevlar and then tie it off in behind the bead. Okay. So it's, I'm sure it's some simple little setting that I've missed on the camera. Um, takes support absolutely key to Yeah, yeah takes support. Yeah, I certainly need it anyway. In no way, take it. I was always when I'm doing it, a nymph like this, I give, I give it a good, good brush, brush out. out. Always, always brushing back towards the bead to really root it out and get, and get uh, those, those lovely little, little bits of dubbing to come out the hackle. hackle. And then, and then just stroke, stroke back. back. And you can, you can see, see the lovely soft hackle effect we get in that. Now we're going to catch and pull them back. And that's a bit longer than the tail. Not too many fibers, but longer than the tail. And there we have it. That's your, that's, that was my number one if this year, folks. Outside of the... Um, outside of the... Um... <laughs> yes, Kevin. I know. Thanks, Carl. Uh, yeah, you're doing a waste. Is that the camera? I'm trying to do everything here. But, uh, that was... That was after the bar the grayling slayer variation but that was definitely um that was definitely my number one in the shirt and you see the black and purple you know black a black a black fly in colored water or heavy water we, we, you know black frenchies mark fly there you can see that kind of fly you know it has all the same com kind of color compositions um and they were really really were fantastic it took 90 percent of my fish i say for a little bit of time i got out there thanks i'd say absolutely uh graham great grayling fly um uh, 90% of my fish came on, on, on the likes of that and then say in the latter half season was that fly on the dropper marsh fly the point and it was um, we, could, we, could, we could really do well um, really do well on it so um, there, there we go, go folks there's, there's two number one in from the season I'm going to jump on I'm going to jump on, <coughs> I'm I'm gonna gonna jump on there, there and um, awkward man Brendan's plans are sour neck on I know oi should be gone there now thanks Brendan Should be gone there now. Uh, sorry, John. It is a double sounding. It's when I reconfigured the camera that time. Uh, the camera I hadn't turned off the, the mic and the camera. I'll have those little teething problems. If they're the only teething problems we get tonight, folks, I'm happy enough with that. Um, we, we, we'll get them ironed out for next week. And I'll just make a little bit of room here now. Um, yeah, I just turned off the, the, the thing there, Martin. Um, it should be fine there now. So we're going to move on. And we're going to tie this little dry fly, okay? Um, <laughs> absolutely, John. He certainly will during the week, anyway. Um, we're going to tie a little dry fly. So I was asked to tie a fly for a guy, uh, uh, kind of a range of gnats for the lakes, and tied them up anyway and sent them on to him. Um, hey, doing Eugene Fagan? Great to have you back on there. Uh, if anybody has scored a match there, I want to throw it up. I wouldn't mind seeing what score the matches either. <laughs> um, but. Um, I tied a load of nets for a guy for Lake Lux, um, big enough, size 14s and 12s and stuff like that he wanted, uh, dries, and it was one in particular they came back with, to me with, and he said, Jesus, that was some fly, you got some, uh, Dave Donovan's on there, folks, uh, <laughs> there he is, Robbie, yeah, full crew in the background, uh, question coming up there, keep an eye out on the, on the um, chat comments there for Dave, um, and tomorrow I, I what I'll do is I'll call out the question there for anyone on YouTube uh, 12 16 all right thanks uh, Dalty um, but anyway this was a serious now nah, he really and he got a tight load of mattress and then I tried some smaller versions for the river made a few little adjustments and man oh man I had some fishing on it during the um, 
<coughs> I had some fishing on it, um, some fishing on it in, in the daytime, up through the, through the, how you doing Martin O'Rourke, great to have you back on, really had some unbelievable fishing on this little thing, um, through, throughout the, the summer days, kind of all, kind of coming into the back end of summer, um, thanks guys, everyone's coming in with the, will someone lie to me and give me a better result? <laughs> um, fair play England, fair play, um, so, it's I done these on a size 16, and uh, for the river, and man, I had some fish on it. A lot of fish on the blind. Size 16, 301, the Haku, okay? Um, let me just get my brain in, in, in place here now to get my materials I need. And uh, really had a, an awesome bit of fishing on this thing. Tiny bit of black Semperfly plastic wax there. Thanks, Ted. United are drawn there as well. Thanks, Thomas. Dave, read out the question yet? No. So, uh, what I'm going to tie in here first, I said it's kind of a midge ver variation, um, is a little bit of our white parapost. Okay, Scary Fly white parapost. So, Dave is on there now, folks. Anyone in YouTube, you are also into this. So, what are the only two countries in the world that don't have mosquitoes? The first correct answer in will win themselves a lovely Pescari fly beanie. Keep his nice and warm during the summer. Okay? So, what are the first, what are the only two countries in the world that don't have mosquitoes? Now, I won't announce, announce the answer tonight because I'm not able to watch all them screens. There'll be no more fly time done. So, what I'll do is answer away there, folks. If I see the correct answer or two, I will uh, say that's it. Someone's got it. And I will double check it tomorrow. It's only fair. If someone's fast enough on the Google search and the, the keyboard to, to win the prize, well, then there's, all I'm doing is just stripping out a couple of these fibres, making it a little bit thinner than it is for a moment, okay? Just taking out a couple. And I'm going to tie that in over the front of the hook. It's actually a bit too long for what I need. Lots of answers coming in there now. Sorry, Roger. Um, and I'm going to just tie that in there over the front of the hook. Making sure it's sitting on top. Couple of turns. And then bring my thread off down the body. Okay, we're going to tie in a little silver wire rib. How you doing, Hugh Flavin? Good to have you back on there with us. Hope everybody's keeping well. By the way, folks, I got to mention our usual prize. If you comment, like, or share the stream, you are in to win tonight's. Um, we will do the random draw tomorrow, and you're in to win all tonight's flies. And I've already got two or three flies in a little tub here for you um, that I would have tied earlier on before we came on. Um, <laughs> come on, Robbie. Uh, so, do, if you are down there, share the stream. Always glad of the support. And I said it earlier on, thanks so much for all your support throughout the summer months there. It was great to meet so many people and uh, get to fish with a few people. Not as many as I would have liked, but it was a strange kind of year for me. Um, looking forward to next season. And don't forget, Pescari Fly Club is coming. Really looking forward to that project. You'll have live fly tying, live fly fishing. I'll be doing master classes from the river that will be on there. We'll be doing, let's say, leader master class and dry droppers and nymphing, lock style, all different kinds of stuff. Be traveling around the world, fishing, meeting different people, uh, doing interviews with them, getting as much information as I can straight from the horse's mouth. And uh, along the way, having a, a bit of fun and a bit of crack. That's what this community has always been about since day one. It's a bit of fun, a bit of crack, and just sharing in the passion that we all enjoy in fly fishing and fly tying. So, um, Scary Fly Club will be the, the um, will be will be coming up in a couple of weeks, folks. Um, so I'm just going to wind up that body. No need to go all the way with that little rib. That's the zero point one sabaya, and just break it away. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take a nice little black saddle hackle and just expose the core a little bit. And I'm going to tie that in again over the eye hook in the opposite fashion that we normally would, would be the best way to describe it. And tying my thread back down a little bit just to make sure the hackle is well secured in. 
Okay, so I'll get the gist of that. I do, Keith Jemison, I do a lot of bass fishing, actually a lot of bass fly fishing and even spin fishing. Um, and we will be doing some shows on bass fishing and um, fly fishing and so I've done a lot of pollock actually this year folks and I did a lot of mackerel as well because the rivers were in so much flood the coastline's only an hour from me here and uh, we had an awesome season and um, this March March and April gone was our, without a doubt our best year for saltwater run sea trout in the estuaries along the whole Waterford Wexford coastline it was fantastic fishing really looking forward to bringing all that to you on the um, True Piscari Club go down there shoot some live footage um, you know, you can see the way we operate, the way we think, the, how we try and find fish and the, the salt water as well as fresh water and stuff like that. Here I'm going to add a little bit of, um, again, here you see that common trend, okay? This is a little bit of light bright dubbing, purpley light bright dubbing, okay? Uh, you can see it there now and this is in as a little under hackle. Um, yeah, I love the bass. Bass is cracking fishing if you get right. But the mackerel was fantastic this year. The mackerel and the pollock there in the second half of the late summer there, August, was just fantastic. Down around hook head and stuff like that. So there's a small little, really small little pinch of that dubbing there, folks, onto that uh, thread. And just slide it up along there. And it's just a couple of wraps there. Just take your time with everything hanging out of the way. Couple of wraps there up at the head. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my hackle and I'm going to wind my hackle down the hook. Basically down to where my thread is. Couple of three, four turns there. And then just get that thread in there. Tying this little pattern, you do tend to trap a couple of little fibres here and there along the way, but we can tr trim them up like. Um, well done, Kevin. Well done, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Maher has caught a good few he's out there. The Antarctic is a continent, not a country. Well done, Kevin. Kevin, there's a hat on the way to you for that answer anyway. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to take our, our bit of um, para post tight in and we're going to stroke that back over our hackles. At the same time, stroke those hackles forward. And then we're going to get our trade. Try not to trap down as few of those fibres as possible. Like so. This is a size 16, Robbie. A size 16 301. Okay, take our wood finishing tool. And again, just take your time. Moving the thread and the tool inside and out. I don't want the thread to slip down. I want to try and keep the thread in as narrow position as possible on that... Um, and make sure you keep your, your para post at the very top of the hook, okay? Tighten off. Carefully get in there and snip away your waist. Now what you can do, if you've better light than me, is you can take a double needle now and you can... Any of those trapped hackles, just pluck them back out onto the right side of the thread. Or if there's one or two that ain't gonna go, get in there with your scissors. And give them a little snip off. Like so. Then we'll cut your, your wing the full length of the body. Maybe a mil past it, not much. Full length of the body, a nice clean square cut. And that's it. James, it's a dry fly. It's it, it's a gnat fly I tied for a guy on a lake. Now without the purple dubbing underneath. I tied it for a guy in a size 12 and 14 for the locks and he came back to me earlier on in the season, really when the duck fly were about as an adult duck fly. And he came back to me and he said, geez, that fly was something else. He got some fish in his side top. Geez, it was, and I know tying it, it was a lovely little fly. And you can see the profile of it there. Um, it's a lovely, lovely little fly. And a little bit of shimmer off the purple line underneath was absolutely lethal. So then I tied a few smaller versions for myself on the river just to give it a go. And um, geez, I had, had, had some great success. The amount of fish I took on the blind to that thing um, and heavyish enough water too like it was you know it wasn't I was fishing low summer water it was heavy enough, enough too like but um, an absolute belter it really was really really chuffed with that one um, and it, had, it just has a really good fishy look it, it rides well in the water and easy enough to see for something that's lying down quite thanks Oliver and uh, for something that's lying down quite low in the water but uh, and, uh, definitely one folks one for the lakes the locks as well as the um, rivers, I'd be tying them for for the bu for a buzzer, for mayfly, or for a duck fly, all that kind of stuff. Uh, really, really good little fly, um, and keep it as simple as possible. I didn't try the purpley version with the purple underdubbing in the um, 
in the on the on the lakes, but uh, definitely thanks, Brian. Definitely on, on the rivers, I had I had serious success with that. Moving off the fresh water, the flowing fresh water, we're going to head over to Lock Style. Um, we're going to head over to Lock Style there now, folks. This is I wouldn't say the most common fly of tide this year, but definitely probably the most successful. Okay, it is an octopus pattern. Uh, tied it early enough in the season for a couple of guys sent it out <coughs> and they had serious success on it okay and the thing about it is you're going to see the real trend here now and it's just by fluke this is not me blowing smoke up up his written like that it, it, this is actually you know it's just when i kind of sitting down thinking and i was writing notes the other day what i tie and you know thinking about the different things i could tie and all the different patterns i tie i tie thousands of flies every year you know and and by the time I finished me note, me four top flies that kind of re reminiscent bit most with me throughout the season, uh, you looked at them and said, geez, these are all bloody the same pattern, like nearly just different style of tie, okay, as regards the content of them. Um, and maybe that's the theme because there was so much rain this year and bad weather during the summer months. And we're going to tie this on a size 8 camazan. Big old fly, lovely big old fly. Thanks, Kevin. Loads of messages here, Ireland and Iceland. Sorry, Rona Gibbons. Um, Loads of messages there and what's it's great to be seeing so many people watching us there on, on YouTube. I hope everyone's keeping well on YouTube. Great to have his first night on YouTube. Now let me think here for a second about trades. I think it, yeah, it's a black trade for this one. So I've side size eight camazan on this tens and eights. Okay, and I'm gonna lash on a bit of simpler fly classic wax there. It's really becoming my favourite uh wax trade at the moment. Um really, really good. The tail for this one is the very same as the tag for my nymph, which is that micro or the twisted bright yarn by Tommy Fly. You all know I love Tommy Fly. Thanks, Jamie. <coughs> so I'm going to take off a nice strip of this and I'm going to quad half, fold it in half first, it's quite thin, and then fold it in half again. Okay. And then again. So now I have eight strands. Okay. And we're going to secure that onto the hook. Tie it in well. So again, I was asked by a customer looking for kind of a purpley claret um, octopus. This is one of the patterns I sent him, and it was the most effective. I'm thinking about my tail end here now. Size 8, yeah. Okay. I can trim it a little bit once I get the fly tied. I often do that. Tie it a little bit long. And then once I have the fly tied, I can trim it back a little bit. Like. Andrew O'Neill. Oh man, you're getting close. Um, okay, the rib here is a red wire. Okay. This is... Um, uni. Size 33, red. And we're going to put a red ribbon there. Again, secured in well. Now we're going to go with a claret body on it, but it's not a, as you can see here, there's quite a few clarets in this. Um, I'll try to get you as a shot. Kind of a few clarets. Quite a few clarets in, in that all the different shades of claret. Don't mind the olive. There's one olive sticking there, but they're all different shades of clarets. Dark, bright. And we're going with the more lighter. We're going with the more lighter of a claret. Um, almost heading down Magenta Road. Seals for. <coughs> Tease a bit of that there. Just dub that on nice and loosely. Don't be too tight with it. Want a bit of a body in this fly. This was made for waves. Another bit. It's always good when you're doing bigger bodies like this to add in the dubbing as you go. And don't try to add it in all at the one time. Stop a little bit short of the eye. Give yourself a bit of space there, folks. We have a, we have a bit of work, a bit of work up there to do um, at that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put my hackle on it. So I got a nice claret cock hackle here. Expose a bit of the core. And I'm gonna add that in there as well. Secure it in well. We take our hackle now. And we bring it down our body. Nice long, long kind of fibers on that hackle. Stroke it off down the body. Once you get to the butt end, 
change over to the rib and then start bringing that rib up the body. So there's some great shows lined up for you this year folks, as if really, you know, between Canada and Slovenia and a few other places like that, gotta got to really just, you know, get a lot of kind of new information, new thought processes around me flies and stuff like that and um, patterns that work and, and stuff like that. So uh, we got some great shows lined up for this winter months. Of course, as always, you, you're you part of the show. Um, yes, I will. Absolutely, Jared Murta. We will. And we'll be going off to do a bit of pike fly fishing over in the west and up the north. Um, all It's going to be inclusive of all fly anglers and everything. As, and much like a, and the fact is, Jared, see this thing, I'm not an expert in pike angling and I hold my hands up straight away. Absolutely not. I've done it a couple of times, but with very limited success. But I'm going to go and learn how to do it, and we're going to put that on through Piscari Club. We're going to go meet the experts. We're going to get them to show us everything that we need to know to get us going, and it'll be all up there live, uncut. Dick Croak is on with us there, folks. How you doing, Dick? And happy birthday to Dick Croak. Uh, birthday there yesterday. But um, through this club, that's what we're going to do. Um, Jared is kind of do you know anything that I'm not 100 percent on, and I'll be the first person to hold up my hands. Even fly tying and fly fishing, folks, for trout. I don't consider myself anyway an expert. It, it's this is a learning perp, a learning journey, and it, it's it, there's no end goal here as far as I'm concerned. I'm learning all the time. I love learning. I love feeding back the information I get from through, through my travels and experiences with other anglers and the conversations I have with people and even my own thoughts and processes I go through on a regular basis. So that's going to be all part of it as well. Um, so it, I'm really hoping it's going to it's it's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of learning. I'm sure there'll be a lot of bleepers and, and blanks and stuff like that away, but it'll be it'll be good it'll be good crack i'm going to add in two golden pheasant uh feathers here okay one is purple and one is claret so i got a purple one there stripped and ready to go as you can see i've just stripped back just stroked everything back left the tip exposed i'm going to tie them in by the tip but i got to lay them on top of each other here's my claret one and i'm just doing the same just stroking back those lovely long feathers and add them in so the two tips are lined up. So where I'm going to tie them in is the exact, is the exact um, same spot. And we're just going to attach them in there. Now sometimes I leave those on, sometimes they can interfere with me hackling. Sometimes they don't. I'm in two minds whether I do it, but because I have two feathers on here, if I'd only one, I probably would leave those off cuts, um, those little pieces sticking out the front. Uh, I probably would leave them. But because I got two, I'm going to snip them away. A little bit awkward here, catching both stems and working your way around the fly with this one. We've got to kind of twist it a bit. And I stroke those long fibers all back into one direction as I fold around. Just be careful with it. But when you're doing two at one time, Stroke them back as you wind them around. Gives you the best finish on an octopus. Don't overpower the fly with it. You have two, so you don't need to put everything in there. Just enough to really give you that nice long cloaking. Don't overpower it. I don't want to take away from the body, the rib. I want everything to work together. And snip away. Then that's a happy moment when you put in your few secure turns and you see you've got a really nice cloaking on that fly. Okay, lovely cloaking. You can still see everything through it. The cloaking is consistent the whole way around the body of the fly. Very important when you're tying a fly like this for a wave. Okay, now got a couple of more bits to add to this. We're going to add, he wanted a little bit of flashing, a little bit of UV flashing. I was thinking, you know, a lot of UV flashes and stuff like that are on Hanks. And they can be quite thick and they can be quite dense and they can interfere an awful lot with the kind of natural movements of the hackles and stuff like that. So uh, it, there's something I've been adding to a lot of my dabbler wings and stuff like that. It's a little bit more supple and not quite, again, as uh, overpowering on the fly. Especially when we're adding in at this stage of the fly. It's not underneath the cloak and it's going to go on top of the cloak. And, okay. So what I use an awful lot and I've been using it a ton this year in, in all my dabblers and things like that is microglint. Okay. So there's Biscari Fly Microglint and this is Purple Rose it's called. As you can see, it's a lovely claret colour with a little fleck of UV going through it. And man, oh man, in a claret dabbler. I'm not joking, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, just mixed into the wing. I kind of mix it in a bit. So, the whole trick to doing it here, okay, 
We don't tie it in as it is. We got to do a little bit of work with it to get it ready. Okay, so what I got one piece or two pieces and we'll double it over. Okay. So then it gives us four strands, very similar to what we did with the tail, okay? We're just making it a bit denser for ourselves. I did a video with this last year, I think one of my dabblers, uh, doing this kind of similar technique, and um, really used it an awful lot this year on all of dabblers, but the Claret Dabbler with this, um, uh, what did I say the name was? Purple Rose was um, fantastic. And all I'm doing between my finger and thumb is stroking that uh, micro and now you can see the way it comes out. It's it's starting to get really, it's starting to get really um, very fine, and it's quite strong because it's a nylon based, so you get quite fine, very subtle, and will not r restrict any movement or interfere with any movement of a natural feather as such. You know, so your your lace long cloaking will still pulse as much as you like. So I do both sides, stroke out both sides, and then bring them together, and then do the same. So now I've got a really nice cloak in there as you can see that. What I'll do then is I'll kind of just between my finger and thumb again. I'll just spread it out a bit because I want this to go kind of around the fly a little bit. Rather than just sit on the top. And hold it in there with your finger and thumb. And just go around like so. And you can just see a lovely little subtle flickle coming in the outside there. How are you doing Clet? <coughs> Good to have you on with us there, Clet. Hope you're keeping well. Dave said he's seen a winner, so we will announce the winner tomorrow. I'll just go back over the feed there, guys, because we got people on YouTube. we got people on several streams. Uh, bar that one little glitch, I think we're doing quite well, actually. I thought this was going to be. Was the wife saying, well, are you nervous about tonight? Tying tonight? So I'm not nervous about the tying or the talking. It's the bloody IT. The whole thing crashes. But look, that's the joys of doing live. Um, it's unplugged, uncut. That's why I love doing it, because there's no um, there's nowhere to hide. Same with Piscari Fly Club, it's going to be, I think it's going to be uh, quite quite an experience doing all that live stuff on the rivers and lakes around of Ireland and, and indeed all over the world. I have a five week fishing trip planned to Australia. We leave on December 17th. Family are coming with me, we're going down for December and we're coming back in mid-January and that whole fishing trip will be on Piscari Fly Club. There will be uh, interviews and meeting different people, calling to different tackle shops, saltwater fly fishing, freshwater fly fishing, that will all be coming on from there. Now, you can finish that fly, an absolute belter. But before we do, we're going to just snip off some of those. So just, just stick the, the point of your scissors in there. Don't cut any of the natural stuff. I'm only trimming off any of those longer kind of fibers off the micro glint. Just as I mixed it and stuff like that, you're not going to get it perfect. And I don't want a perfect, fin a perfect cut on it. So you just get in there with the tip of your scissors and just nick any of those little fibers lying around that fly. And you're kind of just manipulating them into place. Give it a little brush out there now and make sure I'm well covered. <clears throat> and there you go. That's that claret dabbler. Claret bumble, should I say. <laughs> That's that, or the claret octopus. Now, the original pattern, I tied that afterwards for a few other people, sent it out, and they had unbelievable fish in it. Okay, absolutely unbelievable. And it, it looks perfect, even though some people might be looking at it going, God, that's messy looking up. Trust me, it's an absolute belter. There's another thing you can add to that. The very, very first one I did. Big trend, big trend this year. Booby eyes. Okay, booby eyes. I would say this year over all years, they started coming in, orders started coming in a bit last year. Uh, thanks, Martin. Good to see you today, yourself and the wife. Um, <laughs> Hugh Flavin, my man Hugh. You're going to see it now in a second because when I'm talking, you're all about 12 seconds behind me. So you will see that now and say, ah, oh, you go, man, Peter. So the original pattern did have booby eyes because you booby eyes. I say this year of all years, I'd say 70% of the lock style stuff. There it goes again into standby. But it's okay, we're back on quick enough. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Clet. Um, so, um... Yeah, seventy percent of flies had booby eyes on them, and um, it's um, it, it's a real common trend. So all I'm going to do there is I hold my booby eye up to the thread, and I do two wraps around that thread. I'm a, I'm about a couple of mil behind, as you can see, a couple of wraps on the booby eye to get it into place. 
Yeah, and I know James, but like in the last couple of years, it's just been crazy. And then I just wind the whole thing on together until the booby eye lands perfectly on the top of the head, on the head like that. I position it into place. A little bit of a twist. Figure, a couple of figure of eights. Secured into place, make sure it's sitting perfectly straight. If it's not straight or if it's not even on both sides, it will spin in the water and create you a lot of trouble and more than likely. Hey Damien Willis, uh, thanks Paul. It will um, it will um, spin and it'll, it'll twist up your, your leader and if you do hit a good throw then more than likely that's where he's going to snap you. So there we go, little whip finish, just pulling back, little whip finish in there, secure them in. Make sure they're perfectly in place. A little bit of varnish. <laughs> and Dominic. A little bit of varnish in there. Extra little bit because I wanted to soak up into those booby eyes and hold them nicely in position. <clears throat> and there we go, folks. That was the Clared Octopus. Definitely one of the most productive flies I've tied this year for the likes. Very popular. Um, that and probably a Claret dabbler that will show at some stage throughout the season throughout the time season when we're doing a few dabblers and stuff there was a claret dabbler not a million miles off of that either that worked really really well but um one well worth having a crack at this winter uh, lovely looking fly little bit of shimmer to it and um, the purpley tail and then those orange booby eyes really set it off um, and there we have it folks our first live tie live show over four great patterns there from last year uh, giving a bit of a feedback on last year. It was a very mixed year. Glad to be back in a way. Kind of glad the season's over. So we had lots of different things happening th throughout the year that made it a bit frustrating and stuff like that. So glad we're getting a chance to reset now a bit. Uh, looking forward to the winter months. A bit of time. Having a bit of crack with all you guys. Thanks Kieran. Thanks Hugh. Um, thanks Kevin. Uh, looking forward to having a bit of crack every Saturday night with all you guys and retouching base and tying some flies and getting ready for an exciting new season. Um, we're back next Saturday night live on YouTube and Facebook. Hope all our YouTube followers uh, enjoyed having us live tonight and um, a lot of a lot of um, yeah, David Lee. Yeah, the, yeah, the the, the um, the what you call it, the micro is fantastic. Um, fantastic in the wings, and you'll see me use a bit more of that tr throughout the season as we go our tie season with the dabblers and stuff like that, and even minkies and things. I've been using it in quite a bit. It's just lovely material to work with. Um, but back every thank you very welcome, Paul. Great stuff, Jenny. Uh, back next Saturday night. Looking forward, moving forward now into a new season. It's time to get those boxes full, get everything ready to go. Um, absolutely, John Wilkinson uh, had a great year with you too. Got to meet John. Got to fish with John Wilkinson here in Ireland. Um, and we had we had a ball. We had an absolute ball. And then got to meet him. Thanks, Dave, for everything. Thanks, Jim and Bernard. Uh, we got to have an absolute ball in, in Kilkenny. So it was great. Great meeting up with John from British Columbia. And then, of course, going over to him for the, for the Masters. We, we'll have a little bit of an episode on British Columbia at some stage along the road but say we're looking forward now folks uh, we have a long winter of time to get through get stuff ready for the new season and indeed there's a lot of fishing to be done this winter as well so we're going to have a look at that Piscari Fly Club is coming um, that's coming down the road we'll talk a bit more of that when it gets a bit closer but do watch out for that one folks have a great Saturday night enjoy the rest of your weekend thanks so much for watching and taking part and uh, delighted to be back see you all next Saturday night folks <laughs>